Hello boys and girls. Today I am going to teach you how to create um, a Tar Beach inspired drawing. The theme of our drawing is going to be if I could fly anywhere. Here's my example. If I could fly anywhere, I would fly to Blarney Castle in Ireland. I would bring my whole family and we would explore the gardens and climb to the top. For this lesson, you have complete creative freedom for the bottom of your piece. You can draw anywhere that you would like to fly. I had to go on to the computer and find pictures of Blarney Castle so that I could look at something when I drew, and then it was just a series of rectangles and triangles and color. You can draw anywhere that you can think you would want to go. You can picture in your mind what that place might look like if you've been there before, or you can go on the computer and you can look up where the location is and some pictures of it and draw from those. That'll be on the bottom half of your piece. Today, I will just be showing you how to draw yourself flying above the scene. This lesson was inspired by my favorite artist, Faith Ringgold, who wrote the book Tar Beach. Tar Beach is about a little girl, Cassie, who flies over different areas that she would like to claim for herself. For this lesson, you will need a pencil, a black marker, a black permanent marker, because we're going to be using a little bit of water in the sky, some crayons, and a brush and some water and some markers. Now we are just going to be drawing the figure today. The outside of our piece, what I did is I took this piece and I glued it onto another piece of paper that's a little bit bigger and I added squares of fabric to mimic the artwork of Faith Ringgold. You could do this or you could cut out squares from patterned paper. You could go into magazines and look for patterns that you like and cut them out and glue them on. You could draw your own patterns and cut them out and glue them around the edge of your piece. So my first step, now the paper's turned this way, we want our figure flying here. I'm gonna turn it this way so it's a little bit easier for you to draw. We're going to be drawing a circle for the head. We don't wanna draw it too close to the side because then we won't have room for our arms and the rest of our body. So we're gonna move a little bit in and we're going to draw a circle. I'm drawing in pencil because I will be erasing as I work, but I'll press nice and hard so that you can see it in the video. From here, I'm going to draw two arms, two lines for my arms outstretched above me, and then two lines on this side. My next step is going to be to draw my hands. First, I'm gonna draw the thumb which is a little backwards C on this side and a little C on this side. Then I'm going to draw my fingers. I'm just gonna draw one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. I'm actually gonna move this line a little bit thinner. Okay, next we're going to draw two lines for our waist. And then we are going to finish our shirt here. And we're gonna draw two lines for our legs. And then we're going to put a V shape in the middle. And then we're going to draw our feet. Our feet are going to be pointed to the left side of the paper or pointed down towards our landscape. Just 
just like that. Okay, so at this point you can draw lines for pants or you can draw a dress or a skirt on yourself. I'll do a little skirt. But if you do that, you are going to have to erase what's inside the skirt. And then it's time to do our face. We're going to be drawing a nose, which is going to be a little triangle. And we're gonna make our face pointing so that you are looking down at what you are flying over. So we're going to draw the nose, and then we're gonna draw smile, and we're gonna draw down. So we're gonna have to erase Uh, we're only going to draw one eye because this is called a profile or a side view of a face. So we're gonna draw one eye here. And one ear. And then it's time to draw our hair. You can draw girl hair or boy hair. Okay, boy hair would be just shorter. So here's boy hair going around our ear like this, or girl hair, depending on who you are, is going to, could be longer too, it could be wavy. Okay, your hair can come in front of your arm or it can be behind your arm. So you have to erase whatever is overlapping. You can also put your hair in a ponytail. And you could do that by just drawing some lines that go up. We can add the clothes. We can put short sleeves on our figure and a neck, V-neck or whatever you like. Okay, you can add stripes. You can add a drawing or a picture. You can add a belt. And you can decorate your figure however you want. When you're happy with your figure, you are going to outline with a Sharpie. and then color it in and draw your scene below. So after you've finished outlining your figure, it's time to get creative and decide where you would fly if you could go anywhere. You can use a ruler and draw a line at the bottom of your paper. And you could start with writing if I could fly anywhere. I would fly and then you write where you'd like to fly. I'm going to write San Francisco.
and then write why you'd like to go there. I would love the warm weather and to see the Golden Gate Bridge. You could write whatever you want. Next, it's time to get drawing. As I said, I suggest that you look for some pictures of wherever you'd like to fly over. And then usually you'll start with a horizon line. And then whatever you want to draw underneath. my drawing. Again, I looked at a picture of San Francisco and then just simply drew some rectangles. The bridge was a little more complicated, but you can draw however you want, whatever you want, wherever you want to go. Remember, you are the artist. Um, now I'm going to color with crayons and I will be right back. completed my coloring it is time to add the watercolor so again you'll need some markers and some paint brushes and some kind of cup with water it's a good idea to also have a napkin so that you can blot off your brush so you're not you know flooding your paper I don't know if you noticed in my time lapse but I did use a white crayon to kind of just Put some stars in my sky and a moon. We'll see how that comes out. That'll be a nice surprise for us. You also want to apply your crayon rather thickly. Um, some areas like my, my skin, I did not put it on thick because I'm pretty light toned, but you can add white on top of it. This is called resist. It means that the crayon will not mix with where you put marker. If you accidentally slip, and um, get some of the color on your, on your crayon. Let me just finish coloring this. Okay. So when you're applying the marker, you want to, I'm gonna put black near the bottom, I think. Uh, we'll start in the corner. You wanna just kind of color the marker the slower you go, the more pigment you get in your area. Okay, so we'll kind of just color the edges first. You'll see that um, Black a lot of times has a greenish tinge to it. It's just, black is a mix of colors and sometimes there's more blues and yellows to make it kind of greenish. Next, I'm gonna go with, I guess, a dark, dark purple. Oh, that is dark. Good for a night sky. Let's see how this is gonna turn out.
use a nice big brush, dip it in the water, take off the excess water on the side of the cup. If you have a paper towel, you can also blot it. Oh, I'm just gonna dump the water on, we'll see. I really want it to absorb in here. I'm gonna go right over my bridge because I want my bridge to kind of appear a little bit better. And looks like it's mixing and our, our stars are starting to appear. my moon and my artwork is complete I can't wait to see what you create and how your artwork comes out and I really can't wait to see where you decide you want to fly over don't forget to write your artist signature in the bottom of your work and have a wonderful day